Hello and welcome back. This video is by popular request. Many of you have asked me to show you step by step how to set up an audio interface for the first time for complete beginners. We will look at both the hardware connections and the recording software setup. So you will learn how to connect your audio interface to your computer correctly, how to connect speakers and headphones for monitoring, how to record different audio signals from mics, instruments and line level sources, and how to set up and record in your door or recording software. I'll be using a Focusrite Scarlett Studio 4i4 in this video, but the basics will be the same whichever interface you own. Let's do this! Before you get super excited about your new audio interface, do not plug anything in until you have checked out the manufacturer's website or read the quick start guide. Sometimes you have to install software or drivers before you plug in the device. So do a quick check and grab any up-to-date drivers or control panel software. It's important to do things in the correct order. Oftentimes the audio interface will be plug and play on a Mac, but will require ASIO drivers to run efficiently on Windows. With the third generation Focusrite Scarlett interfaces like this 4i4, you generally plug the interface in and then get prompted through a setup sequence. You need to install the Focusrite control app to get full functionality from the Scarlett 4i4, and you will do this during the initial setup. So just read the manual for your interface before you start. Now you are ready to connect your audio interface to your computer using the USB cable provided. The 4i4 is a USB-C device but comes with a USB-C to USB-A cable. If you have USB-C inputs then you can substitute a USB-C cable. Usually you will want to set your audio interface as the default audio device in your system settings. If you do, then when you play back YouTube videos, Spotify or Apple Music for example, the audio will play out through the interface. Just be aware if you do this, sounds will no longer come from your computer speakers. The sound will now play through the headphones or speakers connected to your audio interface. To hear audio from your interface, you will need to connect studio monitors or headphones or both. Usually the headphone output will be quarter inch, so depending on your studio headphones, you may need an adapter. Then you simply plug in your headphones and you can adjust the volume using the headphone level knob. If you want to connect speakers, then these will need to be active to make a direct connection, or if you have passive speakers, you will require an amp. This interface has balanced TRS quarter inch outputs and these active KRK Rocket 5 monitors have a balanced combo input. I can use either a pair of TRS to TRS cables or TRS to XLR. I simply connect the left output to my left speaker and then the right output to the right speaker. Make sure you have turned all the volumes down and the speakers are off when you connect. This large knob is the main monitor volume control. Many audio interfaces have these combo inputs with built-in preamps. These allow you to connect and record microphones, instruments and line level sources and accept both XLR male connectors and quarter inch jack plugs. Your microphones should be connected using an XLR connection. Plug the female end of the cable into your microphone and the male end into the interface. Make sure the preamp gain is set to zero when you plug your microphone in. Then you can adjust it after to get the correct recording level. As a general rule, when you plug an XLR cable into a combo input on an audio interface, the preamp gain will automatically be set as appropriate for microphones. Do not connect any line level sources using XLR leads. Always use quarter inch jack cables for line level signals. If you have a condenser microphone, you will need to turn on the phantom power. Leave this off if you have a dynamic or ribbon microphone. But what if you have plugged in two mics, one dynamic and one condenser? Well, usually this won't be a problem. Most modern dynamic and ribbon microphones will not be damaged by phantom power. They will just ignore it. If you have any doubt, check the specification of your mic to ensure it is safe to use when phantom power is on, if you're using it alongside a condenser mic. 
To connect a line level source such as a keyboard, use quarter inch jack cables. These can be balanced TRS or unbalanced TS depending on the outputs of your line level device. The preamp gain is appropriate for higher level line signals when a jack plug is inserted. To record an electric guitar or other instrument, you can just plug in a standard quarter inch jack lead. You will need to switch the input to instrument level either on the interface itself if it has a switch or with the 4i4 you have to use the Focusrite control app. When you switch to instrument the preamp gain will be appropriate for an instrument level signal. A quick reminder, whatever audio source you are connecting, dial the gain knobs and monitor knob down when you plug things in. The 4i4 also has a couple of line inputs on the back which accept quarter inch jack connections. These don't have any individual gain controls. Now you have seen how to set up the hardware, let's have a look at how you record in your DAW or recording software. To show you how it works, I've plugged a microphone into input 1 and a guitar into input 2 on the front of the interface. Then I've connected my keyboard stereo line outputs into inputs 3 and 4 on the rear. Whichever DAW or recording software you're using, the setup process will be very similar. I'm using Reaper here and this is going to be a very quick demonstration just to show you how to record your first tracks with your audio interface. First, you need to access the settings to select your audio interface as your audio device. In Reaper, you go to Options, Preferences and under Audio you click on Device. Then select your audio interface from the list of choices. An option I like, and this is available in most doors, is to give the inputs on my interface meaningful names. It's easy to do. I click Audio here, then tick the box to allow input channel name aliasing and click this button to enter the names. You'll see that my audio interface has inputs 1 to 4 as you would expect, but also has loop 1 and loop 2. These loopback channels are virtual inputs. Not all interfaces have loopback, but if yours does, it is a really cool feature and I'm going to come back and show you what it does at the end of the video. So let's give these inputs meaningful names and then go and create some tracks. In Reaper and most doors, you can add tracks by double clicking here. So I'll start with three tracks. Once you've created a track, you press this button to arm it for recording. Then you can choose whether it is MIDI or audio, whether it is mono or stereo and which audio source you want to record. Before I do that, I'm going to do a couple of things that will visually help you see what is going on. If I right click on one of the tracks, I can show the track manager and label the tracks so it is obvious what I've recorded in each one. I can also right click and assign random colours to the tracks. Then you can pick them out very easily and also map them to what is showing in the mixer window below. My microphone is a mono sound source, so I'm going to record in mono and I'm going to select mic as my sound source. I'll do the same for guitar. Again, it is a mono sound source, so I'll create a mono track. My keyboard is a stereo sound source, therefore it makes sense to record in stereo and choose keys left and right as the sound source. When you arm a track for recording, the level meters will show you the volumes of each input. For the mic and guitar, I've adjusted the gain knobs on the interface until I'm getting a good strong signal, averaging around minus 18 dB, with peaks at around minus 12 dB. Do not be tempted to push the signals up too far as you will get distortion if you are too loud, but apply enough gain to get a good signal. The line inputs on the rear have no individual gain controls, so I have adjusted the volume on my keyboard to get a good signal. Now at this point, you may have your headphones on and be hearing an echo. This is because many interfaces have an option to direct monitor. When you direct monitor, you instantly hear your mic, guitar, etc. in your headphones in real time. The slight echo you hear is the signal being monitored in the door. Now you can choose to turn off the direct monitoring option so you just hear the signal through the door or the other option is to simply mute the track while you record it. Don't worry, it will still record while it is muted. You just won't hear that annoying echo while you record. As an aside, the 4i4 does not have a direct monitor button on the interface, but this feature can be enabled in the Focusrite control panel where you can set up various routing options. Now when I press the record button, any of the tracks that are armed for recording will record. I could record all three things at once. When I do that, the mic will record separately on track one, the guitar on track two, the keys on track three. Alternatively, I could say record the keys first, 
then record the guitar and finally record a vocal track on top. Once I have my basic arrangement, I could overdub another vocal line or a second guitar track, etc. Note that once I've recorded the tracks, when I want to overdub another vocal, for example, I can unmute what I've recorded so far so I can hear it in my headphones while I add my new vocal line. And that, in a nutshell, is how you can start to record a complete arrangement using your audio interface and your recording software. If you are on Windows, then Reaper is almost identical. The key difference is when you select the audio device, you should choose the ASIO driver option, and then you need to check this box and select all the recording inputs on your device so they are available to record. If your audio interface does not have ASIO drivers, then I recommend you install ASIO for All to get the best out of your device. I said earlier I would have a quick look at loopback. If your audio interface has got loopback capability, then you're in luck because it is a very cool feature. It allows you to record audio playing on your computer. So if you want to record a YouTube backing track, a song streaming on Spotify or internet radio, etc., then you can easily do that. Create a new track, arm it for recording and select stereo loop one and two. Now this step is very important. You must mute the track before you record, otherwise you will get a terrible feedback loop going on. You will still be able to hear your computer audio in your headphones while you are recording and while the track is muted, which you may want to do if you're trying to jam along with a track. When you've recorded the computer audio, you want to stop the playback, then you can unmute the track and play it back. If your interface does not have loopback, then you can use apps to achieve a similar thing. Check out Black Hole Audio for Mac or Voice Meter for Windows. This has been a very quick demonstration. If you want to know more about audio interfaces and other home studio recording equipment, then you'll find lots of straightforward guides on my website. Or take a look at my other videos. I've put together a playlist of my most popular ones, including audio interface versus mixer, how to connect a mixer to an audio interface, XLR versus USB microphones, MIDI versus audio, and much more. Well, I hope you found this helpful. Any comments or questions, post them below. If you've enjoyed this video, then do give it a like and please subscribe and hit the little bell if you want to be the first to see my newest recording tutorials and how-to guides. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye for now.